So my name is Gavin Dennis and I'm a Jamaican. I'm currently living in Germany and I'm the Director of Strategy, Operations and People at G5 Cybersecurity. G5 has partnered with Simply Secure and we're making cybersecurity services more accessible to you. Now I'll show you a demo of what it looks like when your system becomes infected with ransomware and all of your very important files are held hostage. On screen are two windows. Now on the left, you're looking at, at you know, your typical everyday files, Microsoft Office documents, uh, PowerPoint, and a few other files such as, you know, audio and video. And those could be files that you may have, you know, at home. And depending on the type of, of role you have at work, you might have to deal with audio and video files. But essentially, these are your typical files. Now, many of us have a work PC and we have a PC at home, which is our, our really personal computer. Our personal, our personal PC at home, right, might have personal files such as Microsoft Word documents, Excel files. You know, they might relate to, to, to content from maybe course material if you're pursuing a degree. They might be documents that you're handling otherwise for your personal affairs. And especially when it comes to, 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 to people who are studying, they might be doing a master's, a PhD. You've invested a lot of money in this type of program. And as such, losing those files means that you've lost months of work. At work, it's very similar. Your work PC might have a mix of important documents that you need to do your job. And also documents that your company needs to operate on a daily basis. So whether you have a PC only for personal use or you're also using a PC at work, both are very important, one to your personal life and one to your, your professional life within your company. So what I'll do now is to help you see what it looks like when you hear in the news that companies are infected with ransomware or people's PC, PCs have been infected with ransomware. So I'll execute some ransomware samples live. We have what you're what you're seeing is a test environment. Just just as a, a as a disclaimer, this is a test environment, and we we use all of these malicious software to understand how they work, so that you don't have to take that kind of risk. So let's choose one. Uh, from the list here on the right, you should you should see some names that you might be familiar with. There's not Petya, there's Ragnarok, there's Loki. Uh, let's see, there's, a, there's Crypto Locker, which was very, very popular. So let's, let's execute the Crypto Locker ransomware. Now this, this system you're looking at, it doesn't have the EDR solution implemented. So this will give you a realistic idea of what happens when you have not properly protected uh, uh, your, your PC or whether it is a server. Once you haven't protected a system, this is the first uh, part of the demo. So the dot ransom extension is what prevents the, the, the file from executing as an application. So now we will rename it with the exe extension. And now we will execute. You can choose either yes or no, the effect will be the same. And we will just leave it. And you'll see what happens. If you look on the left, remember all of those files, we had family pictures, we had HR letters, we had payroll documents, we had all of those things. Now the ransomware is trying to connect to the internet, to connect back to its server, to, to handle the whole encryption decryption key, but this system does not have internet access. So I'll just give you an example, I'll pick OK. It will go to iplogger.org, but there's nothing that can be done. This uh, box shows that it was trying to execute some function. Now I'll close this. And if you look in the background, what has happened is it now gives us the ransomware window. So the files on the left have been encrypted. If you notice the extensions, they say dot encrypted underscore RSA. And this is the window from the, the attackers saying, hey, you need to pay over money. Here you can see a note that says you must pay 350 to this Bitcoin wallet. And it gives you additional instructions. 
you know, uh, an email address that you can send the email to. And this is the crypto crypto locker ransomware. On the left, you're seeing time left and it's telling you how much time left uh, on left. And if you don't pay within this time, you will not get back your file. Now, we will do some more, some more samples, but just to pause a little to help you understand the kind of effect, right? Now, if you are at work, these could be files relating to payroll. If you work in, 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 in finance, in the finance department, accounting department, there are additional sample files that I've put here just to have, help you get a realistic idea of what this means. This could be HR related documents, offer letters, uh, payment instructions from accounting. There could be, uh, here we have export of backup data. We have also export of source code data. We have quite a few files that you might have and it all varies based on your role. But in the end, the effect is that you will lose access to these files. And this can be the difference between your business shutting down or your, your personal affairs shutting down because important documents that you need, you cannot access them without paying this ransom. Some persons can afford to pay the ransom and can take that risk. It doesn't mean that you will get back your file or get the decryption even if you pay the ransom. So it is still a natural risk that you're, you're taking. So we're not going to pay the ransom, right? This system is now dead. So what we will do now is we will move on from this system and I'll help you to see more samples of ransomware. So this is one of the ransomware samples that brings up a prompt, uh, a window to say, hey, your files are encrypted. Now this virtual machine is dead. Now let's move into another virtual machine to help you see more samples of ransomware. So in this system, in this system, we have the same files on the left. Just so, just remember to keep an eye on the files on the left. As you see, there are Excel documents, Microsoft Word documents, images with your family pictures, you know, videos. Here we have a video of baby's first step, videos of corporate events. So lots of different types of documents to help you understand that nothing will be spared. On the right, let's choose the Ragnarok ransomware. Now, something that's also key to note, some of these ransomware samples, they don't need administrative access to encrypt your files. So you might be thinking that, well, we have our systems connected to Active Directory and it requires an administrator's password to install software. Now, some of these ransomware, uh, ransomware software, they don't need to install within the, the, the system. They connect to some kind of server online to, to do the encryption, send the key outside of your network, and rename your file. Now, everyone has access to rename a file. That's a normal procedure. So you really need to have, to have endpoint uh, protection on all of your systems. Now, let's ex execute Ragnarok. Remember to monitor the files on the left. Now, if you notice, all of the files now have the .ragnarok extension, right? And if you look at the top of this list, there is now a text file that says read me to decrypt. Now let's open this text file. This is the ransomware note from the Ragnarok ransomware. All of these ransomware samples, they, they, have a, they follow a similar principle. They tell you how much money you need to pay, they tell you who you need to contact and that if you don't, you won't get the key to decrypt your files. And this is the same. Here it provides the, it provides the email address for where you can send a Bitcoin. It has a unique device ID and this is what it uses to identify your system uniquely. But they all follow this principle. Once they encrypt your files, they leave a note behind to say, this is how you should pay us. If you look at the top of this list on the right, where all of the ransomware samples, you'll see that this application, which is the installation file for Avast, it didn't encrypt the, this, this executable. And why is that this has no value to an attacker. You can always go online and re-download executable files. And that is why we can still 
uh, function and use the notepad to open the file because the attackers need your system to still stay functional. So executable files are not going to be encrypted. But documents that you cannot um, rebuild or documents that are likely unique to you, such as your Word documents, my, anything from Microsoft, images, videos, all of those things which are likely to be things that don't exist online because you are the one that created them, those will be encrypted. So now we've done, we've done two samples to help you understand what it looks like when ransomware is executed and what the effect is on your files. Now let's look at this same type of process on a system with the EDR solution installed. So this virtual machine has the EDR solution from Simply Secure installed. And what I'll do is to copy those same ransomware samples into this machine and so that you can see the effect. Now I have them on a flash drive because if I, if I have them on the machine, it will automatically just detect them and wipe them out. So now I've just connected a flash drive and I will connect them to this machine called the SS demo. So you can picture this as you being at work. Maybe you've downloaded a file, maybe you've received a flash drive from someone and they said, hey, you know, open this file, print this thing for me. You know, you can think of it in that kind of scenario. So these are our ransomware samples and this is what we will do. We will copy them, we will go to download or any other folder and we will paste them here. Now if you look at the bottom of the screen to the right, these are the detections which are happening in real time. Right? So here are a bunch of, of samples which we tried to copy into the machine but it failed. Now let's do it again so that you can see the effect that happens in real time. These are 43 different types of ransomware, the same ones that we just executed. Let's copy, paste, now you see that they've been copied into the machine, right? But now, if I refresh, they have already been deleted. And on the right here, the Sentinel one, this is the EDR solution at work. And as you see, it has detected all of the ransomware samples that I tried to copy into the machine. And what this kind of protection means is that your users at work would be protected if they mistakenly download a file that's malicious. It could be that you at home on your personal PC, your personal, your really, truly personal computer, it could be that you've downloaded a file that's malicious. And it's not just for, for ransomware, any kind of malicious software. And this is the, the, the effect uh, it would have. Now, earlier you saw that Ken from the dashboard, Ken showed you all of those different detections which had the dot .ransom extension. These are the files. The dot .ransom is just a safety pin to prevent, to prevent us from accidentally executing it. So any ransomware sample that we want to execute, you would have to rename the extension to .exe, which would reflect what happened in the real world of you downloading an .exe file, which is malicious. So that's, that's really, really uh, it from my side. I hope that you now have a realistic understanding of what ransomware looks like, the effect it will have on your system, what it also looks like when you have, have proper protections in place protect whether your system at work, what whichever endpoint, whether it's a PC, whether it's a server, whether it's a mobile device, and your your truly personal computer with all of your important files at home. This EDR solution can protect you. G5 is using this EDR solution and so we know that it works. We have a test environment set up which is what you're looking at and so we can test it. So we have validated it for ourselves that this thing works and it's the reason why we use it. And you should also do the same.